Hello YouTube, it's Doss Greg here, and another video heading your way. Well, we've talked about Savayon, we've talked about Calculate, we've talked about Turox, Ututo, and Pentu. And what do all those have in common? They're all Gen 2 based distributions. But right here is Gen 2 in all of its glory. You know, Gen 2 allows you to start from source and compile everything from scratch, giving you the opportunity to really speed up and keep the best of the best within your operating system. One of the biggest benefits from compiling from source is being able to set up your use flags for just about everything you want. You can keep things as minimal as you want or as fancy as you want and that's the cool thing about Gen 2 since everything is built from source code you have many opportunities to customize just the way you like it and isn't that one of the main features of Linux in general is the freedom of choice and to make it as complex or as simple as you like I've been using Gen 2 for probably close to 10 years now. And believe me, it was one of the hardest flavors of Linux to try to uh, learn. While most other flavors, you popped in a CD or a disk back in those days, and then started just to run the install, and voila, after it was all done, you had a, a Linux distribution ready to play with. Gen2 was one of those distributions that you'd boot up and you'd get to a command prompt and you'd go, um, what do I do now? And it took a long time, even sometimes, just to get to that command prompt. They've made it a lot simpler because I remember in the day when you had a stage one installation, which meant that you started compiling your entire code from the bootstrap and you started with the basic of minimals. You had that opportunity. I'm sure they gave you, I believe they gave you tarball or stage two and stage three. I mean, now they only offer you a stage three. You know, back in my day, when I first started doing this, you had to pretty much do everything from the grounds up. Now they at least lay down most of the foundation for your architecture. Although sometimes I think it would still be neat to be able to do it again from the very minimal to the to the maximum but a lot of people have asked me you know how in the world do you get Gen2 to install and so many times I've told them all you need to do is read the manual it's very simple if you go to gen2.org which I have up right here and you click on the Gen2 handbook it brings you to a spot where you can choose your language and your architecture which I've gone ahead and chose AMD 64 since I'm using a 64-bit OS and right here starting with installing Gen 2 it brings you with the basics of everything you need to do first telling you about Gen 2 and then going on to tell you about where to look for help what kind of hardware requirements of course you look at this and you say who doesn't have these type of qualifications. I mean, these are very minimal, in my opinion. You look at 256 megs of of RAM for a minimal CD, and of course, since this is using an AMD 64 CPU or, a, in my case, it's a Core i7, but it's the same thing as a 64-bit operating system. Um, you know, minimum of two and a half gigs. Uh, swap space minimum of 256. Of course, I'm using much more than that. But you can put this on just about anything. In fact, my, my Raspberry Pi is running Gen 2 with just command line interface and still running uh, servers and, and other operations very well on it. Anyway, if, if you go through this handbook, it explains everything. And wherever you might have confuse, uh, confusion or anything else, it explains exactly what all this stuff. Like, like the Stage 3 tarball, it talks about how you install it, how do you go about it. Hey, look, how should how to install Gen 2 using Stage 1 or Stage 2? I haven't done that in many years, but I remember in the beginning having to do a Stage 1 or Stage 2. And I definitely have done Stage 1 once or twice, just, just for the fun of it. Now, if you're a hardcore Linux person or you want to learn 
all there is about how a Linux operating system is created and works, Gen 2 is an excellent flavor to get started with that. If you're not afraid to try it out, blow it up, try it again, they have such great resources that explain everything. The Gen 2 wikis are awesome. If you ever run into a problem, all you have to do is do a Google search on Gen 2 and whatever that problem is, and you're going to find answers very quickly that can meet your needs and fix whatever problems you run into. I swear, there are so many times I have broken things because something new came out and it just happens. But there's always been a solution out there on the internet to find a way to fix it. Anyway, if you go through the, these instructions, this explains everything from start to finish, including great instructions on how to compile your kernel. And the kernel need not be something to be afraid of. You know, the kernel is as difficult as you want it to be. I started out using the gen kernel, which is a configuration script that pretty much writes it all for you, builds it for you, puts everything where it needs to be, and you just need to create your grub or whatever bootloader you want to use and set it up. But it, it can, if you don't want to customize it yourself, build it for you. They've got great resources to teach you that stuff. It's all right here in the handbook. And I can't stress enough. Go to the handbook. Try it out. If you're afraid to do it on your system, create a virtual terminal and set it up within a virtual machine and try it out. Either way, it's a great learning tool to do this. Anyway, with my version here, of course, I'm running KDE. It recently um, got upgraded to KDE 4.10.3. I don't always update my kernel since I do it by hand. It means that every time that there's a new update, if I have to rebuild it, I have to go in there and remember all the changes I made. And one of these days I'll write them down so I can do that. If I was just using the gen kernel, I could just go ahead and tell it to to install and it would have everything configured for me. But I've kind of stopped using that a while back and started just doing everything from hand and from scratch. So I don't always update the kernel as they come available, but they're there if I wanted to. Some of the things that I've found from other flavors of Linux I've helped to incorporate into this. Now, for instance, in Ututo, I was mentioning that, that little bar there where, well, this used to be just a boring bar over here on the right side, and now I've got that fancy little thing, and I know that might sound a little silly to some, but I think it's kind of neat how the icons do that, and very easy to incorporate into Gen 2. Another neat feature here is, for the longest time since I was command line interface with, the, with all that, I always started my network with a um, with a net dot wlan zero start and that would start it but there's a big flaw with the computer that I have it's an HP uh, DV80 which um, is an 18.3 or 18.4 inch screen and the problem is because it's so wide every time that I flex and it gets warm and it does get hot it causes the whole touch bar up above to start acting flaky which causes the network to lose connectivity every time that this would happen I'd have to stop my resources restart them and then get that script running again well now because I've looked at different flavors of Gen 2 and and how they've done it I've found that network manager works much better and now I can have the network manager down here in my toolbar which lets me connect immediately and if it goes out all I have to do is turn it back on and it automatically reconnects to my network now that may seem simple to a lot of you guys but that was a dang hard thing to always figure out for me because like I said I always did stuff through the command line and I'm not always a GUI person I still left it open so if I don't like to boot into GUI I always like to go to the command line because a lot of times I go into Gen 2 just so I can have that Linux command line so it's nice to still be able to start it manually uh, through net.wlan0 but at least now if I go into KDE I've got that. Now this is all the transparency everything else that uses the standard menu system of course the one thing that you'll know is when you do Gen 2 because you get to pick and choose everything 
It doesn't come with a, a set of anything working. You pretty much have to know if you want Office, whether you want know LibreOffice, K Office, you've got to know if you want the GIMP. You know, what browser do you want to use? You know, what burning software do you want to use? And you install it one package at a time and compile it from code and you get exactly what you want with all, all the bloat. That is the greatest thing about Gen 2. Uh, I've gone through so many of those other different flavors of Linux here and that are all based on Gen 2, so it's kind of hard to think of something new to talk about about just plain Gen 2 other than just how great it is. You know, you can just pretty much compile it to everything. I'm running right now the Firefox, but recently because I noticed Chromium working in so many different spots, I went ahead and installed Chromium. And there it is. Popping up right now. I'm uh, going through stuff. I've, I've learned about Clementine, and I really like the way Clementine works because you know, it gives me great um, flexibility over my music. I really like the fact that uh, Amarok, it's okay, but Clementine seems to really do a much better job. You know, it, it takes a while sometimes to list everything that I have over here, you know, all my music, which I, I have a lot, which I keep on my server. But it does a much better job at keeping track of the of the screenshots of all the different uh, CDs and things that I have, and it's a good easy way to get to the library and to manage my music. I really like that. Yeah, there's I've got Q uh, Comic Book Reader to read comic book files, which is a great comic book reader because I enjoy reading everything electronic. Yeah, handbrake for when I'm wanting to migrate some of my movies over to the server and never caught you know you know ripping stuff that I don't own but only stuff that I do I'm really big you know that's why I really push open source I I don't ever advocate piracy I don't ever advocate hacking or cracking and breaking things because for every program out there that's out there that, that you could hack or crack or break or pirate, there is a free open source solution that can do just about anything that you'd ever want it to do anyway without having to do that. And I always encourage people to look for open source solutions before they ever consider doing something wrong like pirating or cracking or, or even hacking. And but there are great tools out there. Open Shot Video Editor. I love that it's super simple when editing videos and that sort of thing. VLC, of course, for watching movies. I guess we already had put Chromium on my bar there. Uh, see, the GIMP, Audacity, K3B. I, you know, I still like Conquer for a file browser. I still like it more than anything else. And maybe that's just because I've been using it since the old KDE two days. And that's what I'm used to. That's what I like. Of course, GUCV. And this, of course, this bar is called Docky. D O C K Y. And that's what I found as kind of a nice little thing that's easy to, to set up. Uh, there's really not much else to say other than Gen 2 rocks. You can configure it to be as sophisticated or as simple as you like it. If you don't mind installing everything from source code, then it's the greatest way to go. If you don't like the source code thing, you want to go through faster. As I said in my very first video on Gen 2 based stuff, Sebeyon is one of the best that's out there, in my opinion, for having complete control over the desktop and also having package distributions that you can download with bin package instead of compiling everything. But another really neat thing about Gen 2 is after you've compiled your stuff, you can still create a bin host and make that into a package that you could later reinstall as a host or, or as a bin package instead of having to recompile it the next time. And it's very simple to create your own type of repository at home on a different server, say a, a NAS drive or something like that. And after you've built your packages, tell it to bin package or build all the, the bin packages for you, store them there, and then you can create in your make.conf file 
an area so that it looks for those packages if you ever have to reinstall them instead of having to reconfigure them or, or reinstall them from scratch. And the only negative thing about that is a lot of times when you have to reinstall a program it's because it needs to be recompiled with a new for for support with a new library or you might have added a use flag that you want to turn a feature on or off in which case a lot of times you're gonna to have to recompile it from source just to get that to work but if uh, for the most part you're you're wanting to utilize that package with those use flags say on this computer or another computer very simple just to go ahead and point that other computer the bin host and uh, go ahead and install it from there it's a great way to do things and I have thoroughly enjoyed working with Gen2 every time I've tried other flavors they're they're all great in their own way but I always come back to Gen2 because Gen2 is the best that's out there anyway I hope you guys have a great one whatever you're having hope I didn't ramble way too much on this one and I'll try to go ahead and stop it now until next time I hope you guys have a great day morning evening night whatever you're having enjoy it and we'll chat with you later bye